which is a bit of an orthogonal direction. Uh, and we'll, uh, Misha, 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 Misha will talk about uh, laptop fly evaluation beyond the set pole. Can you hear me? Okay. So, um, thanks uh, the organizers for the invitation. Um, I'll try to be concise. And um, so, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, some work in progress we are doing together with um, Alessio Maezza and uh, Fabrizio Onesti. And it's on the topic of um, <clears throat> lepton flavor and number violation uh, in connection to the Higgs. So, um, we know that the Higgs boson has been found and uh, surely remains to be studied in the long run. Uh, at the same time, we know that the uh, origin of neutrino mass remains an unsolved uh, problem of particle physics. And uh, we have uh, high energy tools which are at our disposal to try to <clears throat> find uh, the connection uh, to neutrino mass. And today I would like to investigate this link between the Higgs boson and um, neutrino masses. So, uh, just one slide to remind you that uh, how do we test the origin of neutrino mass in the standard model? Uh, all the charged fermions have Dirac masses, and there is a unique uh, relation between the mass of a charged fermion through the Dirac Yukawa coupling uh, to the decay of the Higgs boson. So, for example, for the tau, uh, we have a clear evidence that uh, it's getting its mass from the uh, Higgs. Um, Condensate. Now, we also know that neutrinos are massless in the standard model, and uh, a natural question would be um, how to account for neutrino masses and whether they have anything to do with the uh, standard model Higgs condensate. Okay. So, um, just to set up uh, the notation, a typical way to accommodate neutrino mass is to um, add a simple single UV completion, which could be a fermion uh, singlet. Uh, scalar triplet or a fermion triplet. Uh, and in particular, in the original uh, paper on the, on the seesaw, uh, these two ca came from a left-right symmetric theory. And I'll, and I'll focus a little bit on, on this theory uh, also in the following. So, uh, one thing that in principle we would like to do, and which is much more complicated than for charged fermions, is to reconstruct uh, the origin of neutrino mass possibly at colliders. So we know that uh, neutrino, mass, uh, neutrino masses are small and they have non-zero flavor structure from uh, oscillations. Now, in order to connect to this uh, measured uh, masses and mixings, we would ideally like to produce the mediator, one, presumably one of these, uh, at colliders, uh, observe its decays and somehow connect to the neutrino mass. Now, uh, this connection is not so straightforward because there are two possible terms. One is Dirac term, the other one is the Majorana term. Uh, this is one example in type 1 or 3 seesaw. Uh, and if you write down the seesaw formula, you can convince yourself very easily that this matrix here contains an ambiguity. It's a general complex matrix. I can decompose it into an orthogonal and a symmetric part. When I multiply these two, orthogonal part cancels out. And the only part that is fixed by the oscillation is the symmetric part of the Dirac matrix, if you like. So there is a ambiguity in the Dirac mass. Even if I measure my Rana masses, uh, and if I know all the oscillation parameters, I still don't know how to uh, predict decays at colliders. So in this sense, type 1 and 3 are ambiguous theories of flavor. Now, uh, how to observe this? Uh, one way at the LHC is to produce the heavy Majorana neutrino uh, through its Dirac couplings and observe a decay to same sign leptons and two jets. This would probe directly in Dirac with the possibility of large couplings, and it also connects to neutrinos as double beta decay at low energies. So um, uh, such searches have been, uh, are now done at the LHC, and you can see that just recent results uh, from CMS are starting to overtake previous limits from Delphi, uh, which are done on the, on the Z-peak. And here, for example, the FCC uh, future EE would, would go down by, by a huge factor if you gain enough, enough Zs. Um, so uh, the dominant background in this case 
are misidentified QCD jets, uh, TT bar, and uh, pair production of uh, vector bosons, uh, Ws and Zs. <clears throat> now, in left-right, uh, the situation is a little bit different. Uh, first of all, uh, this theory restores parity at some high scale, so there is some relation between left and right, uh, and right-hand neutrinos are necessarily there by, uh, by anomaly cancellation. Uh, and this is the theory that originally led to the seesaw, and by left-right parity, Dirac has to be symmetric Therefore, you can remove the ambiguity, and if you observe the heavy right-handed neutrino, you can really predict the Dirac mass. So there is, there is a little bit of a uh, gain in, in such theories in terms of flavor predictivity. This is just because the flavor basis is well-defined in such theories. So if you can measure uh, this charged current, uh, you would be able to measure the Majorana, the heavy Majorana mass, like this. Okay. So uh, the process is slightly different. You produce a heavy resonance in PP bar collision, and then observe, again, two same sign or, oppos uh, or opposite sign charged leptons and two jets. By looking at the invariant mass, you could measure the Majorana mass. <clears throat> and by tagging different flavors, you could reconstruct the entire uh, flavor uh, mass matrix. Uh, the upside is that at least in parton level, there's no missing energy, and this has a very high invariant mass. So you can cut on that, and there's basically no standard model background for such searches. The, the total reach is about 5 to 6 TV, depending on the heavy neutrino mass. So this is some um, um, kind of a roadmap that we did with very early uh, data to, to show what happens. So for very high mass, or well, few hundreds of GeV, uh, this channel is very clear. So we have two leptons and two jets, and this is the early limit, around one GeV or so. But when you go down in mass, the signal changes. So you have one jet, electromagnetic activity, displaced vertex, and finally just missing energy. It's because the decay length become, becomes very uh, large. So you're escaping um, outside of the detector. Um, this is, uh, there's also a neutrinos double beta connection, so this uh, shade here uh, is just uh, a corresponding rate for neutrinos double beta uh, mediated by, by these particles. <clears throat> and also lepton flavor violation, just, just, just mu and gamma. Okay, this is the update uh, from CMS, and you can see that the bound is now around 3 TeV, while this region below 100 GeV is relatively unexplored. And uh, it's understood why, because uh, this guy becomes boosted, so this charged lepton goes inside these two jets, and um, the sensitivity is basically gone. Okay. Um, now, how much do I have? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Good. That's good. Um, in the second part, I'd like to uh, talk about lepton flavor and number violation in Higgs physics. So I'd like to discuss the Higgs decay as a potential gateway to, to neutrino mass origin. Okay? Um, now, people... Uh, you've said that twice. That's why I want, I want to understand if, uh, if I get it right. I mean, there is no... I mean, the mass of the neutrino, whatever method you get it, it's always through the coupling to the Higgs at some, at some, by some mechanism. There is no alternative. No. No? No. But how can you get the mass of the neutrino without a... Well, what do you mean? Uh, precisely what do you mean? Uh, uh, okay. For example, here, uh, if, I look, if I just look at this model here, I have a Higgs which does not necessarily couple and gives a mass to neutrinos directly. But the Higgs field is still there, I mean. Sorry? So, I mean, the Higgs is still there. It's not... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, okay, the question is, can you observe this origin? If you think of the Weinberg operator, then you would say it's hopeless. I only have LH, LH, okay, which gives me Higgs coupling to two neutrinos, missing energy. So, there's no way to reconstruct any information on the Yukawa, on the Dirac Yukawa. There's no charged fermion in the final state, and that's one thing, and the rate is hopelessly low. Yukawa is 10 to minus 6, if you like. Okay, so uh, in this Weinberg 
picture, effective approach, no? There's no way, there's no hope to get any information, okay? But I will show you an example with order one couplings where you could see, well, I'll show you what you could see, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> there are a couple of examples that people look at that have to do with a coupling of heavy, heavy uh, uh, neutrinos to the Higgs. Okay, so one example is uh, Higgs decaying to a right-handed neutrino and a left-handed neutrino. Uh, now, uh, typically this is suppressed by small m Dirac, so one needs either cancellations or go to a, another model where Dirac can be large and neutrino mass is still small. And the final state depends on how this right-handed neutrino decays. Typical final state would be uh, missing energy, one charge lepton, and uh, two jets. Uh, there's a significant standard model background just because of missing energy, and there is nothing you observe in, in terms of lepton number and flavor violation. It's hidden inside of this uh, neutrino. Uh, so people looked at how this relates to mu gamma and found out that this kind of search is feasible for this window between 90 and 110 GeV. Below 90, there are constraints from Z, uh, from the ZPO. So this is uh, not re very relevant, but above 90 GeV, this kind of search could be, could be performed. Um, in left-right symmetry, by the way, this cannot be done. MDRAC is just way too small. There are no cancellations, no fine tunings. Now, <coughs> in, in the minimal model, uh, in left-right symmetric model, you break uh, left-right symmetry with another triplet, which develops a condensate at, say, TeV scale breaks left-right and gives masses to W and the right-handed neutrino. So the right-handed neutrino gets its mass by coupling, with a Yukawa coupling, to the uh, triplet condensate, just like all the standard model charge fermions. Okay? So you could, if you could produce this right-handed neutrino Higgs and observe its decays, they should be proportional to their masses, right? To, the, to their mass square. This is how you would determine the origin of heavy neutrinos. Um, and it turns out that uh, if they are fairly light, the branching ratio is of order one. This production of this Higgs is typically very much suppressed by left-right mixing or by other, by heavy scales. However, uh, there is a term in the left-right potential which couples the standard model Higgs inside the bidoublet to the triplets here, okay? And you could have mixing between the two, um, let's say, uh, condensates, uh, which, is, which could be sizable. So it's suppressed by the, by the scale, by the left-right scale, but with order one couplings, by the way, this suppression is linear, with order one couplings, this could be of 10% easily, okay? So the idea is to look at Higgs decays via mixing to the heavy Higgs and uh, observe two heavy uh, right-handed neutrinos, okay? So the Higgs could decay to two, a pair of heavy right-handed neutrinos with uh, their mass below mH over two, uh, which is interesting from the point of view of neutrinos double beta decay and safe from many lepton flavor violating constraints. There's no need for any large m Dirac here. Uh, neutrino masses are generated by standard uh, Dirac size. And the branching ratio normalized to BB is suppressed by the mixing enhanced by their uh, relatively higher masses and suppressed by the scale, okay? This could be of order of 10 to minus three or so. Mm, such kind of uh, decays are disfavored in type one and type three just because the, there is a, a existing bound from Delphi and CMS on the mixing and this is way too small to be observed. But through this mixing, you could easily generate such a signal, okay? So how to look for it? Uh, you look at Higgs decaying to a pair of neutral Majorana fermions, and they decay to two same sign or opposite sign uh, charged leptons and four jets, okay? So this is the signal. There is no missing energy at parton level, and you can look in the same sign uh, mode to uh, get rid of the background. Uh, and by the way, there are all kinds of possible flavors. Uh, you could look for lepton flavor relating as signal as well. Um, so the efficiency uh, we compute for this uh, process 
depends on the mass, and uh, it, gets it gets worse when the these particles are very light, just because the PT of leptons is small, so it's not so, e uh, not so easy to see at the LHC. But uh, at around 40 GeV, the efficiency is of order of 10%. Uh, there could be, there are various sources of background um, for this kind of uh, signals. Uh, one is from, these are prompt backgrounds, just from the standard model. Uh, so you are producing pairwise WZ, ZZ, and WW. Uh, also TT bar gives you uh, a signal uh, for the background when, when one T decays to one charge lepton, T bar, T bar decays to B bar, and that B bar gives you another same sign uh, charge lepton. Um, there are also other possible channels where you could get a signal by misidentifying uh, the charge uh, of the muon, for example, and you could misidentify a hadron for a muon or for an electron. So these kind of backgrounds are, turn out to be relevant. And with additional cuts on missing ET, remember this is basically no missing ET in the final state, and uh, on the missing hadronic transverse energy, uh, this signal seems to be prelim preliminarily feasible uh, at the 13 TV LHC uh, for the order 10% uh, mixing uh, with the standard model Higgs. Okay. Um, so what about the FCCE? Just a few thoughts. Uh, so when you gather such large statistics, 10 to the 13 Zs, uh, you would expect a much higher limit on, uh, on the Dirac here, on the mixing, uh, which is around 10 to minus 11, 10 to minus 12. Uh, and this would almost probably prevent you from looking to, for Higgs to nu n, just because the same parameter that you've constrained in the Z enters here. And uh, this is less than 10 to minus 9. So uh, probably this is hopeless uh, to look for then. You probably won't get 10 to the 9. Higgs at the <coughs> FCCE. Um, how, well, there is a window above the Z mass when this is gonna kick in, okay. But below that, the Z is completely uh, uh, killing it. Um, for the left-right, uh, there is a difference between uh, the environment at the LHC and the uh, E plus E minus. Uh, there's a fair background at the LHC, uh, especially from Miss ID, so you have to be careful how to, um, how to look for the signal in this region, especially uh, due to the isolation of the muons, for example, uh, and it becomes inefficient for small masses. Uh, while at the FCCE, uh, there is uh, less QCD background, and, and you could, uh, there's also less prompt back background. Uh, uh, so it should be uh, easier to handle, and one would expect a higher efficiency, uh, especially for lower masses, okay, at, at such an environment. So, uh, yeah, I'm done. Uh, so to conclude, uh, there are ways to test theories of neutrino mass at colliders, uh, and one would hope to reconstruct uh, the, all the flavor states to connect to neutrino masses, which naturally leads to LFE signals. There, are, there exist a number of searches for these mediators at the LHC, and in particular, there are searches in, in the context of Higgs decays, and we pr we're proposing another one to look for lepton number violation uh, in the final state. Uh, so this would be a new gateway to lepton number violation, and it seems to be feasible at the 13 TeV LHC without any particular tuning of, uh, of couplings. Um, and prospect for the FCCE uh, remains unexplored. It could be promising. And maybe that's something one could, one could think about uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mika. All right. Thank you. One thing you might want to consider uh, is the possibility of seeing the same model that produces the um, Z decays into light neutrino, heavy neutrino, 
in case of a W decay, where you have a W going to electron and heavy neutrino, um, the advantage of this is that you it's uh, similar to the diagram you showed for the uh, but the advantage of this is that the W is tagged by its decay. You have the lepton flavor. And then you have a final state lepton flavor as well. If you mean at the FCC or? Oh, I, for instance, at the FCC 100. There's many more Zs, right? No, there's more Ws than ah, Zs. There's more in the Ws. Okay, then by it a factor could of be 10. Two. I didn't we know that. We talked okay. about 10 to the 14 Ws this ah, uh, yesterday. Okay, I see. <laughs> so it's a huge rate. Okay, that's a. It's not obvious that one can do any of this physics at the uh, at the hadron machine uh, because of backgrounds. But if it is true, it's very, very interesting. To that's a fair point. Yeah. Thanks. No more questions, so let's thank all the speakers and especially Miana and all of the participants for such a lively two sessions. Thanks. What? Okay, that's it. That's right.